In this video, we'll be talking about the basics of uh, Adobe Photoshop. Now, before I begin, uh, I would like to point out that I am using a Wacom Cintiq monitor. Um, and some of the things I'll be talking about will be usable, only usable through a Wacom monitor or a tablet. But I will point them out when they do arise. Uh, everything, at least in this video, can fully be done with a mouse. However, there is a little bit of added benefit having a Wacom Cintiq or monitor or something comparable to that. So, um, I've opened up Photoshop, and if you've never used Photoshop before, you'll be presented something similar, um, but you'll see a section like this where it shows your last used documents as well as um, these various um, menu functions here to create a brand new document. So, this, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a lot of vocabulary, which uh, is important to uh, digital art in general. As well as, as well as the basic UI functions of, of Adobe Photoshop. So um, here what I would recommend what would you do if you're following along is if you click on create new it'll open up the dialog to create a new um, file. So I scroll over here click on create new and I click and you see after a moment it opens up a new document settings with a bunch of different settings here and if you've never done any digital art art, art at all um, this might be a little little overwhelming but it's fairly simplistic once you understand the, the the core things so along the top they have some tabs that break down different presets that you can go into in here um, and you feel free to come back through here but I'm gonna go through and talk about making custom things and if you ever do development let's say for mobile a mobile app or something like that they do have some presets in here for you already. However, I'm going to talk about making one from scratch. I'm just going to scroll this down a bit so we can see all of this at once. You can give the, the preset uh, a name right here. I usually don't bother with that. Uh, you could name it right there. And then they list uh, formats. Um, you guys are probably all familiar with this. They have a width of 8.5 inches uh, and a height of 11 inches. So using um, uh, this, this inches is the standard format is something you can do that if you're familiar with you know paper sizes and things like that you can set up your documents to be print size as well as print quality to print so right now it's just showing that the file size would be eight and a half by eleven and it's important to know if you're thinking print you need to pay attention to resolution now print resolution is 300 dpi or pixels per inch uh, I'll come circle back to this once we've created something new, but this is crucial to anything print. Anything lower than this um, runs the risk of looking blurry um, when you go get it printed. Um, so if your go end goal is possibly to have something printed, it's important to have your resolution be at 300 per, uh, DPI pixels per inch. And if that's the case, some most people will measure things out in inches. Color mode. Um, is how, what the mode of color, how it's being perceived in, in the document. Adobe is capable of doing quite a, a few different color modes. The most common being RGB, which stands for red, green, blue, which a monitor would display uh, pixels of color through on, their, on, on, the, on, the, on the devices. Um, the other one that's more, most popular is perhaps is a CMYK printing process, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black which is a, uh, a gang press printing uh, style platform, which your larger printers, or even some actually home printers use, the inks inside there, um, to uh, create images of different values. Now, the difference between these is, is minor, but what they do is they have something called gamut, which is just a color range, which some colors will show up better or worse, depending on you know uh, which kind of format it's in. For example, a printer might not be able to print the same colors as RGB, and the RGB, the limited, uh, very few of them can't print everything that's in CMYK. And the same is true for lab color. Lab color stands for luminance and then two different coordinate systems, A and B uh, channel uh, coordinate systems for a color that's really um, big on uh, higher end drum scanners and things like that. Um, the last two that I skipped over here is grayscale, if you want a picture to be black and white, and bitmap is... Um, very um, binary. It's either it's either black or white. The pixels of of the screen. Um, so it's um, this is I don't use this one as much anymore. 
Um, typically, the most common again is RGB. And this is the reason this is, is because your monitors you're literally looking at right now are RGB color. Um, and I'll be talking about gamut uh, later on and things like that. But uh, my advice is paint in RGB. You can always switch to la uh, CMYK later if you need to, and I can show you how to do that in future lectures. Um, so I generally leave that as default, but I'd like to talk about what these settings mean because um, this class is taught from an academic standpoint and trying to uh, explain everything that we can. Uh, background contents, you generally just says what color the background is going to be by default. Again, you can change this. Uh, I just leave it as the background content is white. Uh, but you could make it black. You can make it some other color. You can make it transparent. All these things are customizable. Um, feel free, to, once you learn the program a little better, feel free to go back and change them. Um, so you, these are the default settings. I'm just going to do 8.5 by 11. Um, or if we wanted to make these some, something different, we could. We can also change the, the, the orientation to be horizontal versus vertical. That just swaps the two numbers right there and so on. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and make this a horizontal picture for, for, for this particular demo. So I'm going to go ahead and leave these settings here. 11 by, width, 8.5 height, uh, height, 300 dpi. So this is a print quality um, image, but it is going to be in the screen space of RGB. And I'm going to hit create. All right. So I reset my settings to the default UI in Photoshop, and this is what it looks like. On the right-hand side, they have a Learn category here, which shows uh, limited tutorials. And by all means, go ahead and watch them. But obviously, if I'm sitting here uh, instructing you guys on Photoshop, I'm not going to be clicking on these. Um, and they also have something called Libraries, which lets you save um, particular things like colors and graphics and templates that you might download from the Internet or create yourself. Again, something I don't need for this, these, lecture, these lecture series that I'm going to be going through. Um, some of these other ones, I'm just going to go ahead and leave these other ones here. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. Um, and this is the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to customize this window because I'm going to try to get as maximum amount of screen space as I can for this, this instructional series. So it's um, straight, pretty straightforward. Uh, what I particularly do, and there's lots of different ways of doing these, this kind of thing is I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag on this Learn tab right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag it out. And what that does is detaches it. So if you had multiple screens, this is also Vantage. When I let go, you can see there is now this floating uh, palette of this particular subject, which is Learn. Um, granted, if I wanted to, I, could, I have multiple screens. I could put this under the screen, or you know, if this was something that interested in me, I, could, I would keep it around. But I'm not interested in this. There's a little X in the top hand right. Now, if there's anything you ever want back, you can always get it back. So don't worry about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and close down this Learn tab. Get rid of it. Same with Libraries. Pull Libraries out. And then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that as well. So right off the bat, I made my screen a lot bigger. Um, this is the default UI minus those two panels. And I already feel like I have a lot more screen real estate to work with. So first things first, because I, I tend to... Uh, skip past this is I want to talk about navigating this window. If you can see um, this window, you can um, zoom in and out of this thing. Right, it's just white paper right now. But if you wanted to zoom in and out, and I'm a huge fan of my quick keys, so get ready to, to write down notes or use something to, to write the, these, you know, this in like Word or, or some sort of notepad. Um, Control plus or I think Command on a Mac um, is the quick keys. Um, for zoom. So control plus, zoom in, and you can see, kind of see that the numbers up here are changing on my ruler, which you might not be, have available, which I, uh, we will discuss later. And you can see my scroll bars are also changing. If I scroll these, I can scroll around using these scroll bars to, to move to see. But I'm zooming in, and control minus is zoom out. And there's actually a lot of different ways of doing this same action. Um, this is just the way I prefer to do it. Um, so control plus and control minus or zoom in and zoom out. Now, a great thing is you can also see right here in, in, in Photoshop is it shows the name, which mine's untitled because I didn't bother to name it. And it shows the percentage that it's zoomed in or zoomed out in this case, 66, 66%. And it's RGB color and 8-bit. Eight, eight so I zoom out, 33%. Zoom in, 100%. So you just kind of get an idea of where you're at. Now, if you're zoomed in at any point, 
and you can't see the edges of your um, your paper. In this case, I'm just going to call it paper. Um, you can also, besides just navigating through the scroll bars here, you can also navigate by holding down the space bar. And this is generally the way I do it. Holding down the space bar temporarily changes your uh, cursor to a little hand. And this lets you move the, fun the functions around. So you can move around. So holding down the space bar is how I pan the, uh, the page around and move things around. And again, combined with control minus and control plus, let you move around so much. Okay, so um, first things first um, after that, because I, again, I wanted to get that out of the way, is we have a menu across the top with most, uh, pretty much all, the, all the, the commands available in Photoshop. Um, some of these are found in multiple places, um, especially if you have different palettes open, but uh, for the most part, I believe they should all be up here um, it, it, or let's open up something that has them. So for example, we can come in here and click on file. You can see there's different commands, and so on and so forth. Now these are actions that you can take. And what we also have in Photoshop is tools. And this is located on the toolbar on the left-hand side. So there's things we can do on the menus and we have tools. Now the bar right below the menu bar is a properties bar. And this bar is the properties of whatever currently tool you have active. And by default, my tool is the move tool here. And this tool is um, what lets you move uh, things around in your screen when you when things are on different layers. Right now we don't have any layers, but it kind of is just the default tool for things. And it, so therefore this property bar has all the appropriate uh, tools that are associated with that particular one. So every time you change your tool, this will change as well. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna go through all these tools at some point, but I'm gonna go ahead and dive into my opinion what is the most popular tool in Photoshop for this first lecture, and that is the brush tool. And that's heavily used in digital painting as well as other kinds of art, such as you know pretty much everything, um, you know UI art and things like that. So again, I'm a huge fan of my quick keys. I could come over here and click on the brush tool, but I'm gonna tap the B key, the Bravo key on my keyboard, and it switches to the, br uh, the brush tool. And the brush properties will all change. So these are all properties unique to the brush. Now, the brush tool um, <clears throat> has a lot of stuff in here that can also be controlled by quick keys. And again, I'm a huge fan of my quickies, so I will point them out. But at, if, if they can't, I can't use a quickie, I will most likely be using quickies. And again, I'll try to point them out and again, at those instances. So if you ever see something change um, and I mistake, I make a mistake later on the lectures by not, you know, I changed the brush size, for example. Um, I did it with a quickie. I'll try, again, I'll do my best to point it out. So here, let's go ahead and go in here. So first off, we have some brush presets, which we have none. Um, next thing is we have brush size as well as some properties of a brush such as uh, size and hardness and some presets here as well as the angle of the brush as well and, and the shape of the brush. Um, and then we have a brush library. We have modes of painting brush and again, opacity brush. Again, I, I think we can come back to this, but they're all up there and we'll come to them. So if I move my mouse in this screen or, or my, 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 tap, my drawing pen, you can see a little circle. If you don't see this circle, uh, there, it's a it's a keyboard property or a property in the preferences, but it you can get through the keyboard. It's the caps lock key. You can see it changes based on a circle or a crosshair. So if you don't see the circle, the first thing you want to try is the caps lock key on your keyboard. All right. So the circle shows a uh, a brief view of what the tool looks like as a brush. And if I click the bracket keys, bracket keys on the keyboard. Um, so right between the after the P key. The bracket keys will change the size of the brush. So right bracket will increase the brush size and left bracket will decrease the brush size in set increments. And now I can point out how this is changing. If you look up here in the properties bar, this is indeed changing. And again, if I were to come up here and change this via the size slider here, they would also change, but I prefer the brackets. 
if I change the brackets here, you can see I'm changing the brackets. And you saw me accidentally paint a little mark on there and I just control Z to undo like a standard application. So let's go ahead and use the bracket keys. And again, I'm just making strokes here to show you kind of the, talk about this tools. There's, you know, ooh, ooh, cool color. Where's this color being picked from? The color is coming from right here in the bottom left of the toolbar. Um, Photoshop breaks this down into foreground color and background color. Um, basically has two colors preset in there for different functions. Certain operations will kind of sometimes mix these colors or it's a quick way to swap between two loaded colors. So right now, again, the default's black and white. So I can say it's painting black and it has a slight, slight fuzzy edge to it. They call this hardness um, in Photoshop. That's a property of hardness. Um, I, I tend to sometimes call this feathering. So if you hear me use that, that's kind of just my, my word from it from other, other software. So you can see, we can change that. If I come in here and use the bracket keys, I can change the size. So, so on. <coughs> now, if you want to change the color, again, we have black and white over here. If you want to change the color, we can, but we're going to stick to these two colors for this purpose of this little demo here, but we can swap between them easily. And that is the X key, the exacto key, or the xylophone key, whatever you want to call it. X key will let you swap back and forth between the colors, and you'll see them physically or physically or digitally move here in the black and white. Black, white, and I can come in here and paint white on top of it. So if your screen's get a little crowded, feel free to paint on this. Granted, we could use the eraser for this function too, but again, right now we're sticking to the brush tool. So bracket keys make things bigger, bigger and smaller. And the X key will let you toggle back and forth between the two colors and your foreground and background color. Now, uh, the default brush here has a feathered or uh, a semi-soft hardness edge. And again, this setting is also found up here. You can see right there. The hardness is set to 0%. So it's fuzzy, blurry, which is fine for some painting things you want to do. Sometimes you might want a crisper edge. And again, I could come up to this and just start messing with the slider. However, this is my fan of my quick keys. I prefer to use the, once again, the bracket keys to change this. Now, the regular bracket key changes the size. But if you use shift bracket, you can change the hardness. So if I do shift bracket, bracket uh, shift right bracket, I can increase the hardness by 25%. Looks like that. If I do shift right bracket again, increase it by 25, now we're up to 50%. Looks like that. Shift right bracket again, 75%, and shift right bracket again, you have a completely hard edged. So you can see we can move up and down, I'm just hitting shift left bracket a couple times, shift right bracket a couple times, and we can move back and forth between the hardness values as well as the size values. And this is all done with brackets. So brackets for Straight up brackets for size, shift brackets for the hardness. X key for swapping back and forth between colors. Okay. What else can you do with the brush tool? So we're just kind of diving into our brush tool here. You can use the shift key in multiple different ways to draw straight lines. If I were to, I'm on black, just for to show here, and I were to click, just click, just I'm just touching or clicking the left mouse, click somewhere, move my mouse, and then hold down shift and click again, it will draw a straight line from that point to that point. So click, shift, click. Move, click, move, shift, click. We can draw straight lines from point to point. Now, if you hold down the shift key when you're drawing a line, so if I hold down the shift key, I can draw straight lines orthogonally. And then all that matters is the first way you start dragging. So if I start here, I click, or sorry, hold on shift and start dragging up and down, it will only go up and down. I can't drag left and right. I'm still holding down shift. But if I let go of shift and come over here and click again and start dragging left and right, I can only drag left and right. I'm holding down shift can't go up and down. So whatever way you originally draw it, it's the way you're, the only way it will go. And this is true for all other tools. And that's one of the beauties about Photoshop here, is a lot of the stuff I'm showing you, 
it will work with multiple tools. So a lot of times, like you've already learned a few things with brush tools, a lot of these tools, for example, will, when we get to the eraser tool, a lot of these commands are the exact same, which is nice. Okay, in addition to uh, the hardness, as well as the edges, as you know, drawing straight edges, you can also mess with the opacity. Um, right now, if you were drawing with a pen tablet, and I'm not sure if your computers would automatically uh, recognize the tablet and start start showing opacity. Mine's turned off currently, um, so I assume yours would be too. Um, but you don't need, you know, if you don't want to, or if you have a mouse, you can mess with the opacity in the other ways. For example, um, right now the opacity shows right here. We can adjust the opacity with the number keys on your keyboard. Um, so if I hit the 5 key, and this does work with the keypad as well, if I hit the 5 key, it will change the opacity to 50%. So the, the click changes to the 10% of whatever you click on. So 5 was 50%. If I draw now, it's 50% gray. If I were to draw this, it lays down 50% of that color. So it's 50% of whatever color is in whatever you're painting. So it looks gray here, but it's 50% of that. Now, if I were to click and draw again, and I'm holding down, you can see that I can go back and forth. And as long as I'm holding down, I call this um, like plateauing or leveling up of the like of the color. It will not increase that. And again, I'm just constantly holding this down. But if I let go, and I did, and I start painting again, I'm going to see the same thing. But if I cross over, it will start stacking those on. I had 50% to 50%. So a lot of digital applications do this, but it does take a little getting used to, especially if you come from a traditional art background. Um, it tends to layer a little bit uh, more differently. As you can see, I can layer it over and over and over and over again. I can lay it over and over and over and over again. So let's say you're getting tired of seeing just black and white. You want to pick different colors and you want to start messing with the opacity, you totally can do that. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit first. We can change these colors to be whatever you want. And there's lots of different ways of doing this. First way is clicking on this little box here, or any one, either one of these boxes. Click on a box and you can change the color of that box. It opened up to a different screen, there we go. So you can see it opened up a color picker and you can use this cube, uh, this color cube to pick pretty much any so uh, color in the, the RGB color space. Um, it has brightness and the uh, value, or whatever you want to call it, value uh, vertically. It has saturation horizontally. Um, so what we can do is we can get a really saturated red, highly bright, and then it has the hue on the, the right hand side, this hue bar, so you can change the colors here. So you can see we can change the colors as such. It also lists these values in HSB, HSB which stands for hue, saturation, brightness. Sometimes it's referred to in other programs as HSV. RGB, which is your, your monitor color space. Lab, which was the one that I mentioned for a lot of high-end color scanners. CMYK for print. And it has a hexadecimal code right here. Now, if you see this color, and it shows you what, it, what it's turning into, what the current color was, over here on the right-hand side, sometimes you'll see this little explanation mark. That means it's out of gamut. On a gamut, I mentioned this when we talked about RGB to CMYK. That means this color won't print because um, this is RGB has light running through it. It'll print duller. And if you click on this little square below the explanation mark, you'll see what it looks like, roughly guessing what it will look like printed. So Photoshop's already trying to say, hey, we don't think this will print in the color space that you're, you're picking. Now, there are other ways around. I'm just talking about standard printing operations here. Um, so this is out of gamut colors. Um, just be careful, mindful of that. But most of the work um, nowadays, I would say, is more, you know, it's a lot of stuff, you know, digital illustrations, you know, meant for, to be seen on the screen. This is not a concern unless, like I said, for you, unless you're printing your work. So we pick a color by either you know we can cancel this out or go with this bluish color here i guess and then hit okay and you can see the that background color turn or that black color turned into blue and same thing if i come over here and i hit fit five for 50 percent and start painting 
it's 50%. I hit the zero key, it's 100%. If I hit the 10 key, or the, the one key, it's 10%. And you can see the opacity changing right here. You know, and so on. So you can see I'm painting different colors. And I can layer these. And I can make multiple strokes here and build this up. Or if I were to soften the brush by using shift left bracket to feather this edge, we can build this up a little more naturally for trying to make it more soft. Now the other thing you can do, of course, is you can use your X key to swap between your foreground and background color, and maybe pick a different color for the other color. So I come in here and go this, click on that, click on maybe yellow, maybe I'll pick like a, a lime or yellow, hit OK. And I start layering this on here, and you can see we're getting pretty, pretty colors now. So we got to build this up, same thing. I hit the two key, increase to 20%. So again, you can always see your opacity right here. So I hit the X key to swap back and forth. Maybe I'll build these up. Maybe I'm kind of mixing these, try to find a new color. So I'm just hitting the X key to swap back and forth between the two. And I'm just kind of exploring what the, these two colors being mixed with is. Um, and there's different ways of setting Photoshop to mix. Um, by default, it's more like airbrushing. Um, but you know, you get, you're getting a little bit of kind of green in there, um, kind of, um, as well, but there is other ways to change Photoshop's mixing colors, which we'll get into later. So what we can do here is let's say we like this color in the middle and I want that color to paint, let's say somewhere else. Um, we can get our colors by selecting on the screen itself. Um, Photoshop has a great way of doing this. You don't have, I mean, you could go into the color picker tool, which I don't even remember where that's buried anymore. Um, again, I'm a huge fan of my quick keys. You're going to hear a lot of quick keys here. Is if you're in brush mode, and you have to be in brush mode for this quick key to work, um, is if you hold down Alt while you're in brush mode, which we which we are, if you hold down Alt, you can turn into a little eyedropper, and you can click anywhere on your canvas and select that color. And you can see my foreground color change to that greenish color there. Now, if I come over here and start painting, it's going to paint that green. Now, this throws a lot of students off guard. Like, wait a minute, that's not the color I picked. You gotta remember, um, again, that your opacity setting, a lot of people forget about their opacity setting. Yeah, we are painting that color, but right now I'm painting 20% of that color. So if I hit the zero key on my keyboard to change back to 100%, you can see I'm painting that color now. That color over here. So that color is right there, all right? So again, we can, uh, just to recap, we can change the size of the brush with brackets, the feathering of the brush with shift brackets. We can toggle back and forth between a foreground color and background color with X key. We can select the, the new colors by clicking on these little box swatches here. Once we have start getting different kinds of painting, especially by mixing colors, we can use Alt to um, select colors from our canvas, and we can use the number keys to change our opacity. Now, one other quick thing, which is minor, I'm gonna select this color here just for show, is uh, if you hit two numbers quickly, you can get the you know the percentages that are not on the 10. So like I said, the numbers are, are 10%, so one is 10%, four is 40%, and so on. If you wait like a half a second, it, it works like that. But if I hit two numbers rapidly, like one in five, I can get to 15%. Um, generally, I don't really need this. I generally stick in 10% 10, 10 increments unless I'm getting down really low, like 0.5 or for 5% for, for or something. And I really want to build up color very, very softly. Um, so you can see um, that is those things. Uh, flow, we'll come back to that in a future lecture um, and so on. Um, okay, so you have these colors down here in, in, in the foreground background color. Um, of course, I could go back and click on them and change one to be black and one to be white. Um, Photoshop does have a quick key for this, and it is the D key, Delta key. If I click on the D key, it will reset the foreground colors to be black and the background color to be white. And that, So it's an easy way to get back to black and white. I'm just going to hit the X key, swap to white. Z zero key, in my case, to go to 100% opacity. And then just paint all of this out. We'll talk about the eraser tool as well in future lectures here. But you can see, there we go. So again, hopefully you enjoyed that. Right now, there's a long way to go on with Photoshop. We're painting everything in this default on the default background. 
just using one layer and we will definitely talk about a lot more stuff down the road on how to expand upon this. All right, see you next time.